If you're preparing for the AWS Solutions Architect Associate, let me save you a lot of time stress and wasted effort. This is the most valuable AWS certifications for beginners, but it's also the one people underestimate the most. I'm a self-taught cloud engineer I'm now working for an AI company, and I passed this exam on my first attempt. I also have 14 AWS certifications. So in this video, I'm breaking down the exact system I used step by step, and if you follow it properly, you massively increase your chances of passing the first time. Grab a tea or coffee and let's get into it. Let's start with something obvious, studying. But here's the uncomfortable truth. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're supposed to be studying right now. And instead, you're watching videos about how to pass. Studying is hard, especially if you work a nine to five, you're tired after work, motivation isn't consistent. The mistake people make is waiting for the perfect routine. There isn't one, whether it's 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the evening, or long weekend sessions, all of those work if you commit. This exam is not the cloud practitioner. You can't just vaguely recognize services and pass. You have to understand AWS architecture, and there's no shortcut around that. There are plenty of courses out there. Udemy, a cloud guru, free YouTube playlists. They are all decent. What made the difference for me was choosing a course that explains why services exist, shows how they are used together, goes beyond exam bullet points. Some people complain that deeper courses are too long, but here's the reality. These exams teaches foundational AWS knowledge. If you rush it, you'll fill that gap later when you try to build real systems. This was one of the biggest breakthroughs for me. I stopped taking notes while watching videos. Instead, my process looked like this. First, I watched the video with no notes at all, full focus, just understanding. If something didn't make sense, I paused and asked ChatGPT to explain it in simple language, without unnecessary jargon. Second, after the video finished, I wrote notes from memory, only the key ideas, only in my own words. If you cannot explain it simply, you don't understand it yet. This part is uncomfortable, and that's exactly why it works. There's a quote I love. If learning feels hard, your brain is actually doing the work. Third, I rewatched the video quickly to make sure nothing important was missed. AWS is not theoretical. You don't really understand AWS until you have built things, broken things, fixed things. That's why labs matter so much. Doing hands-on labs makes architecture questions easier, shows real-world trade-offs, builds intuition instead of memorization. Even if you don't work with AWS daily, labs will close the gap very quickly. This is where a lot of people fail. AWS doesn't ask random questions. Most questions fall into few patterns. Lowest operational overhead, lowest cost, most secure, most available or fault tolerant. Once you recognize what the question is really asking, have the answers eliminate themselves. This is just as important as knowing the services. Here's something that surprised me. A colleague of mine understood the content, did the labs, still failed the exam. Why? He couldn't recall information under pressure. That's when I started using active recall. Instead of rereading notes, I turned them into questions. Things like, when should you use ALB versus NLB? Why choose SQS over SNS? I used Anki, a free flashcard app that tests weak areas more often, leaves strong areas alone, decides what you should study and when. Even five to 10 minutes a day makes a big difference. I put the link below in the description if you want to download the app. Practice exams are the difference between passing and failing. Important roles, full exams, not random questions. Timed, no notes, no Googling. Every wrong answer became a note, a flashcard, a gap I needed to close. After a few exams, patterns appear, and that's where real progress happens. This exam is long. The questions are long. The answers are long. One question can be a paragraph, plus four paragraph long answers. You're doing that 65 times. The only way to prepare for that is by doing full length practice exams. When I finished the real exam, I was mentally exhausted, and that's normal. My strategy was simple, answer easy questions immediately. Flag difficult ones, move on. That way, easy points are secured. Time pressure affects hard questions, not easy ones. Here is how I prepared. I started by doing the ultimate AWS 
Certified Solutions Architect Associates by Stefan Marek, which is a 27 hours course. It's really complete. It's basically theoretical, but then there are also demos. And to get more comfortable with, with practice exams, I also recommend to do this other course from Stefan Marek uh, that are only practice exams, and this includes six practice exams. And also, if you want to be even more comfortable and more confident, you can do as well this Code Cloud AWS Solutions Architect Associate Certification course that it's 48 hours long and you can either do it completely or just go to the lab section and this includes 18 labs and one mock exam and to reinforce more and to have even more practice with mock exams you can go to tutorials dojo and select for the AWS Solutions Architect Associate exam and here only for 14.99 uh, US dollars you can have four practice exams plus one randomized test and also flashcards. So I think this is a really good deal. And doing all this, you should be ready to pass the exam. But remember, wait until you get consistently between 70 and 75% in your practice exams before jumping into the real exam. And also remember that if you already passed the AWS exam, you can claim a 50% discount. So this exam, instead of costing 150 US dollars, it could cost half of it, 75. And I also recommend you to start with a cloud practitioner because it's easier to pass and you will build momentum. There are a lot of concepts that will repeat in this associate exam. So it could be a good alternative, but it's not necessary. It's only a recommendation. And quick note, I'm preparing a course where I will help you build and a portfolio of AWS projects interview ready because the certification is great, but you also need projects to show your skills. So if you're interested, please click below the waiting list and you will get a discount when the course is ready. And when you know you're ready, for me, the signal was clear. Consistently scoring 70, 75% on practice exams. That's when I booked the real exam. And a bonus. What do you do after you pass? One final tip. There's a huge overlap between Solutions Architect Associate and Developer Associate. I went straight into the next certification while everything was still fresh and it paid off. If this video helped you, like the video, subscribe for more AWS and cloud content. And if you've got the exam booked soon, good luck. It's challenging, but it's very passable if you prepare the right way. See you in the next one.